camera speed. Now, here is a motion picture film. Good evening, and welcome to Real Movies. Tonight's film is Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. It is a moment in an era, and it is timeless. It is the future of British cinema, set in days gone by. Based on the rock opera by seminal British band The Who, tonight's film is Quadrophenia. Quadrophenia tells the story of James Jimmy Cooper, a London mod who dreams of being somebody, spending his money on suits and his prize scooter, hanging out with his mates, popping pills, and trying to get the girl, all to a blazing soundtrack of 60s anthems. Things come to a head when the mods and their counterculture rivals, the Rockers, descend onto the seaside resort of Brighton, pulling at the thread of Jimmy's life, which soon begins to unravel. By the release of the original album in 1973, The Who were established as one of the biggest bands around, having come off the success of Who's Next and another rock opera, Tommy, which was filmed and released in 1975, starring the band alongside a Who's Who of 70s music and acting talent. By the time the band released the album, the mods and rockers movement of the 60s was already past its peak, yet the Who themselves had been at the forefront of that scene. So they set their classic tale of teenage angst against a backdrop of their own making. When it came time to adapt the album into a movie, Frank Rodden, who would later create MasterChef and Auf Wiedersehen Pet, was given his first directing gig, with the screenplay a collaborative effort between four writers, including Pete Townsend himself, who had written the album. Written without holding back, the dialogue is sharp and real. If you find swearing offensive, this isn't the movie for you. It's a classic tale of adolescence, and though it was released over 40 years ago, the events and emotions of the film, awkward sex, drug experimentation, house parties, violence, dating, trying to be something, are all still just as relevant now as they were then. In fact, in an era where the mental health of young people is fast becoming more of a concern, quadrophenia is starkly prophetic. The casting in this film is now legendary, with new talent that would soon become familiar to audiences across the UK, but it nearly looked very different. Initially, another legend of British rock was to take centre stage as Johnny Rotten, frontman of the Sex Pistols before he started selling butter, was screen tested for the role of Jimmy. The distributors point blank refused. That's no bad thing, as Phil Daniels is the life and soul of Quadrophenia. His performance is second to none. The intensity, the faux confidence, the eventual tragedy, all totally visceral. Alongside Daniels, we see Ray Winston in an early role, Toya Wilcox, recognisable even then, Mark Wingett ahead of his eventual career-making stint in The Bill, there's The Ash as the heartbreaking Steph, and a memorable turn from Sting as the effortlessly cool Ace. A lot of the reason to see Quadrophenia at the time was because Sting, fronting the police by this point, was in the movie, and his casting as Ace was a masterstroke given the later revelation. We also get a brief role for P.H. Moriarty, his third appearance in a real movie selection. I was stunned by this film. I wasn't expecting to like it nearly as much as I did, but from the opening sunset, I was completely enraptured by what is a slick, fast-paced kitchen sink drama with a brilliant soundtrack. The editing from Sean Barton and Mike Taylor really stood out, especially during the Beach Riot, and this film's influence on filmmakers like Guy Ritchie is clear. In fact, there is no questioning the influence Quadrophenia has had on modern British pop culture. The cinematography captures Britain in all its grimy glory, and it's no surprise Brian Tofano was the cinematographer on both Train Spotting and Quadrophenia. Quite apart from its cast, its writing, and its sound, Liam Gallagher has cited the movie as a major influence on his life, and the attitudes and parkers of Oasis suddenly take on a different meaning. In fact, 90s music owes a lot to Quadrophenia. I kept expecting Phil Daniels to turn around and say, You should cut down on your pool flight, mate. Get some exercise. Not only that, but when Green Day tried their own rock opera with American Idiot, it wasn't difficult to see the influence Quadrophenia had on the extended music video for Jesus of Suburbia. It's one of the truly great music films, a perfect coming-of-age movie, and arguably one of the best cinema experiences ever to come from the United Kingdom. Fueled by rock and roll, but delivering so much more besides, keep it cult, grab your suit, and fire up your scooter. 
This is Quadrophenia.